I will start. Uh, happy to share with you our first experience with the Quadra, which is not a really total body pet system, but almost. Um, it's the Siemens uh, total body pet system. Um, but first, I will start uh, with some background about our department, our research line in infection imaging and the EANM infection committee. And then I will show you um, many examples um, of uh, Quadra scans in ICU patients and in children. So this is our department and this is our uh, camera park with four PET CT cameras, including the total body pad and two spec CT cameras. We have a cyclotron on site. We have a fully GMP uh, hot cell lab with 17 hot cells. And what is important is that we have a long standing collaboration with Siemens. So that means that every new camera system, well, practically uh, comes here in the UMCG in Groningen um, as a first uh, well, validation. We did that with the Vision Digital PCT system, and we were one of the first for the Quadra. We also have a preclinical um, camera park, and this is our um, well assortment of, of traces. So we have a lot of traces for regular care, including 11C traces, and uh, we have um, many research in zirconium traces. So from uh, short life to long living uh, traces. So this is uh, the research line in infection inflammation and immunology. Um, well, I just go quickly uh, past that. And um, what is important is uh, the EANM infection committee, which develops guidelines and recommendations. And um, I've been a member of that committee for, for several years now. And well, this is from 2020, but actually there are uh, several more. We, ma we made several guidelines in which all European nuclear medicine institutes do should stick to. And we did that together with the clinicians. So that's important. It's not a nuclear medicine guideline. It's a really clinical guideline. So together with cardiologists, with vascular surgeons, um, with um, a rheumatologist, et cetera, et cetera. So if we... Um, Go to the indications for FDG PET for infection and inflammation, then I think there is a complete list. Endocarditis, vasculitis, vascular graft infections, patient bacteremia, et cetera, et cetera. You can, uh, you can read it. We have the policy in our center that we perform an FDG PET CT within 72 hours in patients with suspected endocarditis, suspected vascular graft infections, and in patients with bacteremia. So that's important to know. So actually, every day we have almost seven to 10 PET scans for infection imaging. And in a total of 35, 40 per day, that's, that's a lot. So back to um, what I'm, uh, I have to tell you about. This is, um, well, the installation of the Quara PET CT in, uh, in our center. So coming from outside and then uh, through the walls of the hospital, through our uh, uh, camera room. And uh, well, we, took it uh, or we installed it in September 2021, so almost one and a half years ago. And this was the opening, it was in Corona times, uh, Corona times. so um, you see all the, all the masks here. This is our uh, chair of the board of directors and uh, the director of, uh, of Siemens. And we got a lot of attention also in, uh, in the national newspapers about the use of this new fast scanner. So this is what you all probably will know. Um, the Quadra PET CT has an actual field of view of 106 centimeters. So it's not a complete total body pad, 106. But for most reasons, for most oncological indications, that's enough. You can scan from head to mid thigh in almost every patient. So including the long patients from the Netherlands, which are uh, well, um, probably around 190, uh, most men in, uh, in our country. Um, so we hardly have any problems to, to not have this field of view. But indeed, if you really need a total body scan, that, then at this moment, we're not able to do it. However, there will be a new upgrade in June in a couple of weeks, and then there will be also the flow motion. So then we can uh, have two back positions and, and also uh, make a total body PET scan on this quadrant PET CT scan. So these will be the new options in the new upgrades in a couple of weeks. So we looked at the uh, performance and uh, well, you see the, the very increased sensitivity if you compare it to the digital PET-CT division and to the conventional uh, MCT biograph uh, PET-CT camera system. 
we looked at dose reduction and uh, tried to use it in, in children and infants. And we also look at um, the delayed imaging. So um, probably there is a possibility to scan for more than five half-lives. If you look for dynamic imaging, then it's a wonderful machine because you have all organs in the field of view. And this is an IL-2 activated lymphocyte imaging. But you can see those, uh, those nice images. And what we also are aware of is that there is much more detail if you compare it to a conventional PET-CT camera system. This is a patient with a large vessel vasculitis. And when you normally see the black vessels, you can see with the quadra system also the details, what is inflammation and what, for example, is atherosclerosis. So that's a nice thing also of this quadra system. Um, this is a paper that we produced and um, actually it's a roadmap to implementation and new possibilities. So if you want to have this quadra system and you have to convince your board of directors, um, we also state that this in, in this paper. So it's a business plan. It's a plan to convince uh, all your departments and your head of directors. And um, we also provide an overview of all the opportunities and challenges of this new camera system. With the opportunities, of course, the improved image quality and the high signal to noise ratio, short imaging protocols, imaging with lower doses, imaging kinetics, and of course, uh, well, the multiple regions and all the organ access uh, in the field of view. And it's always a balance between the activity that you administer and the time that you scan. And we will now focus on the scanning of ICU patients and the scanning in children. So looking at the regular ICU patients, then there are a lot of tubes and lights. And um, well, you probably know that better than I do. Um, but it's a difficult situation to scan those patients. And when you order a CT scan, then it's almost daily business. In the ICU, they say it's hopefully today, it's fine, uh, radiation, no problem, it's low. And the radiology technicians, they say, yes, of course, we will do that today. It's really daily business. But when you order a PET scan, then the ICU people say, oh, it's too risky and it takes too much time and it's useless, and we don't have the personal, and well, they got a panic attack because it's a lot of radiation, because it's nuclear medicine. And they say it's a logistic nightmare. And also with our department, the camera is most of the times blocked for at least 1.5 hours. And they also state here, oh no, I don't like all those tubes and lights. So it's not a good marriage at this moment, PET scans in ICU patients. We looked retrospectively, and then in our center between 2010 and 2020, we only performed scans in 30 ICU patients. So that's not a lot. And I will go quickly, quickly past this. The results were good. Sensitivity, specificity, around 90%. 14 out of 21, the results of the can change clinical management. Um, but the main uh, disadvantage was the poor and reasonable image quality in many patients. And the reason is that ICU patients often receive multiple intravenous solutions. The enteral nutrition was not stopped. They use insulin. Um, <clears throat> they they uh, didn't stop the, the carbohydrates in case of endocarditis. It's a different environment between the ICU and the pet resting room. And they often have multiple organ failure, like kidney and liver failure, leading to a reduced background clearance and a reduced FDG metabolism. So we wanted to do better and we had this quadra system. So we started the collaboration between nuclear medicine and ICU. We involved our radiation safety officer. We gave education to the ICU staff and to our technicians. And we wrote a standard operating procedure and a checklist. And we inject at the ICU department. So that reduces time and we scan on our quadra system. And then the ICU patient and the personal only has to leave the ICU for approximately 30 minutes in total, which is actually the time for the diagnostic CT scan. So this is our uh, standard operating procedure and it's a Dutch, but it declares all the conditions, the request, the diet, the glucose regulation, the use of steroids and heparin, all the preparatory acts for the tubes and lines, all the warning signs, the tracer administration, 
also protection for personal, what to do with radioactive waste, and what to do in case of contamination. So it's a really standardized operating procedure. And um, well, this is how it looks like. This is an ICU patient at our quadrant system. And then I will show you some examples. Open male, 46 years old with a bacteremia, uh, probably a pneumonia, but the port of entry was unclear and they asked us for other signs of infection. And this is a three minute scan time on the quadrant at CT with FTG. And well, look at the results. This is quite an amazing image and it's not only a pneumonia, but you also see many abscesses in the muscles. So in the upper leg region, but also here in the thoracic region, you also see a spondylodysitis. But this is just three minutes scanning 106 centimeters field of view in the quadrant system. Another one, male, 69 years old, with a bike accident, several fractures and brain injury, several surgeries, and four weeks later, he was admitted to the ICU because of a sepsis, and uh, well, the ultrasound and the CT revealed an hematoma on the left obturator region, and this is the scan. And because we wanted to have the upper legs full in the field of view, we skipped the head because it's only 106 centimeters. But what you see is these infected hematomas in um, uh, the pelvic uh, region, but also in the left clavicular region, here you can see it. Another one, a male, 61 years old, with a mental cell lymphoma treated with CAR T cells, known with head and neck cancer, now with a lymph node metastasis, and admitted to the ICU with COVID. And the question was, are there active COVID lesions or are there tumor lesions? And this is the result of the three minutes scan time on the quadra. You see here the tumor in uh, the Rosamella fossa, and you see the lymph node metastasis with all the lump lesions were from the COVID disease and not from lymphoma lesions. But it's a nice image, only three minutes scan time. And this is uh, the last example of the regular ICU patients, male, 71 years old with a melanoma, um, admitted to the ICU due to severe lung embolisms, and they asked for metastasis, three minutes scan time. And well, look at this image. Um, this is diffuse metastasized melanoma. We also scanned um, COVID patients. Um, we actually have still two studies running. Um, a patient, the Petkoff study with patients under ICU in the acute phase ventilated COVID uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome patients, and also with FAPI, so the fibroblast activating tracer in patients with lung stem COVID complaints. So this is one example of a patient admitted to the ICU with COVID with a caesarean section three weeks ago. And then a month later, she got COVID. She went to the ICU, intubated. I hear a lot of noise in the background. All right, so um, in fact, the question was, is there an infection beside COVID? So the three minutes scan time, and you see here the example and um, well, you see the COVID lesions, lesions, but also there were some lesions with higher FDG uptake, which was actually pointed out to be a super infection with the fungal aspergillus. And you also see the periarticular ossification, which is also uh, one of the um, well known side effects um, um, after COVID and after long ICU stay. So another one, 46 years old with COVID, ARDS, acute kidney insufficiency, sepsis, and they also asked for infections besides COVID. And here you have uh, the result, active COVID in both lungs, but also abscesses in the supraspinous regions and active lymph nodes all around the body. Um, we put all those examples in, in this pictorial essay that was just uh, published. So this is what I told you about in patients with lung standing at COVID and we scan those with FAPI. And these are just four early examples, but you see specific uptake in the lungs, uh, which fits with active fibrosis. 
long time after the COVID infection. So what's the verdict now? These are the first results. And we now scan, I think, one or two patients per week. So from 30 in 10 years, we now go to 50, 100 per year. We need more patients. We need more analysis. We have to find out the role of dynamic imaging and the role of organ access. But in the UMCG, most ICU specialists are believers. And we think now that if you scan them on the quadra total body PET system, that it's really a perfect match. If we go to children, then there is even more reason to look at the balance between imaging time and between um, the administered dose. Um, in the past, we often scanned children under sedation because of the long scanning time and of, uh, because of the inability to lie still. Um, now we don't need that anymore. Um, so in most patients, three minutes or even two minutes scan time, um, they are able to lie still and we don't need sedation anymore. And I think this is the nicest example. This is a girl of 11 years old with an incomplete EVSD with fever, um, slightly elevated CRP, possible endocarditis. And this is a scan on the MCT, so the Biograph MCT conventional PET-CT camera system. 18-minute scan time with sedation. So under sedation. And we didn't find a clue for the fever, just very slightly elevated uptake in the heart region, but this is not enough to call it an endocarditis. But then five days later, she was admitted to the ICU because of the sepsis and the CAP of uh, almost 300. And then we had just the quadra system installed. And this is the result of the quadra scan. And there is now an endocarditis and there is a subphrenic abscess. And of course that developed in these five days, but just look at the image quality, 80 minutes under sedation, three minutes without sedation. This is really the game changer for imaging children in, on the Quadra PET CT system. Some other examples, a girl, 14 years old, liver transplantation, question, is this post-transplant uh, lymphatic disease? 50 kilograms, 50 megabacterial, so one megabacterial per kilogram. This is the result of a 10 minute scan. This is the result of a three minute scan. And I'm sure you agree with me that the three minute scan is enough for the diagnosis of PTLD. Seven years old, 25 kilogram, fever of a known origin and a high CRP. We scanned uh, this child for five minutes and this is the result, the double sided nephritis in this uh, young boy. Five minutes scan time without sedation. And we don't um, use FDG alone, but we can also use other traces. And this is a boy of nine months congenital hyperinsulinism. And well, that's, we are at the chair referral center for those kind of indications. They want to know if this is a focal or a diffuse type, 70 megapacarels acquisition time, five minutes, 20 minutes after injection of F-DOPA. And you see here the nice results. So this is the diffuse uh, type of hyperinsulinism. Five minutes scan time. And the last one is a 10 week old newborn with a tetralogy of follow with a sepsis. 10 week old, only 12 megapacarels, three minutes scan time, no sedation, effective dose 1.3 millisieverts. That's way below all the international recommendations. And well, this is the result. And I will show you the result in the MIP image and also with the ultrasound. And we found an endocarditis of the eustachia valve, which is a fetal valve in uh, the inferior vena cava to the right atrium region. And uh, it was also the first time for me to, to hear about this. And we also found an abscess on this right foot. 12 megabacterials, three minutes scan time, no sedation. We are right now looking for the other traces instead of FDG for infection imaging. So we look at activated lymphocytes, activated macrophages, and we are also working on bacterial traces like vancomycin and sorbitol. And we're looking also at the quadrant system. How sensitive is it? How many bacterial colonies you need to image it? So 
sometimes we don't scan patients, we scan the dead chicken here on the Quadra at CT system, uh, which we uh, injected with liquid vancomycin. So that's also possible to do that and look how many colonies you need to, to be able to visualize it. And as a final result, and out of the region of infection imaging, just one example of a long lived tracer, zirconium trastuzumab, which we use for HER2 positive disease in breast cancer. 45 minutes on the conventional camera system, 30 minutes on the quadra system, and even zirconium scans look like sort of FDT scan, much better sensitivity and image resolution. So looking at all the opportunities, I only talked about children and ICU patients in infection imaging, but of course we have the antibody imaging. We have the increased rate of patient throughput. We have the high temporal resolution. We have the ability for drug response evaluation, for parametric dynamic imaging, um, for multi-tracer studies, for long living isotopes, and to look at the organ interaction. And that's what we hope to find out in the next couple of years. As a last slide, just to um, put your attention on, we, every year we have a Congress in our uh, center. This year, it will focus on artificial intelligence, but next year we have the global, so the worldwide total body pet conference in uh, our center and in our city. And I wanna thank you for your attention.